All right, welcome to blog posting number two. Um, in this blog post, I'm going to go over creating a component by inheriting the functionality of a base component or a foundation component. So once again, we're going to start on the welcome page. Uh, and again, I have the uh, Adobe Digital Enterprise platform in front of me here. Uh, CQ has a similar welcome page. Uh, it's laid out a little bit differently, but you will find that it has the same functionality, just in a different spot. So in uh, my first video, I, I created a demo page. And it was under Geometrics, English, Events, Max Demo. So I'm going to bring up this page and just take a peek at it. In this page, you'll see that we have the over, overlaid text component on the page already. And this is great. Everywhere where we wanted to overlay the functionality of the text component, it's now changed with this nice spiffy new gray box. This is great. So, but now the author needs to put in a, another text box. And this text box is going to be used by legal. And they want to be able to have a text box that has a red border on it to denote that it's an it's a important text box. So, you know, the authors can't create this now because the text box, all the text boxes that they ever use, the default functionality is to have that gray bar. So they really can't use that component anymore. So they're going to need a new component that it acts just like the original component, but it's different. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an inherited text component. And we're going to do that by going over to CRXDE. So to do that, we can either go two places. So let's, I'll show you how to get there from the main page. So if we go back to the, uh, the welcome page, and you scroll down in ADEP, you'll see a link down here that says CRXDE Lite. Uh, in CQ, I believe it's on the right. In CQ 4.5, it should be listed over on the right of the options here. So we're going to click on that. And this is the web IDE, CRXDE Lite. You can use CRXDE, and you can also use Eclipse to do the same type of function, same type of uh, operation. All right, <clears throat> so we have libs, foundation, components. So again, we're going to target out the text component here. So inside the text component, we're going to need to inherit the functionality of this node, but then we're going to need to extend that functionality or change that functionality to include a red box and not a gray box. OK, so like I said before in my first video, this box is really handy right here shows you the path that you're at. So I was actually, I had actually selected the text node. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab this path. I'm going to copy and paste it into my clipboard. Now, as I pointed out in the first video, when you go to apps, this is where you do all your work. So what you need to do is set up uh, a nice little namespace for you to work in. And in this case, I'm going to create up a little folder. I'm going to name it AAA. Not for my drinking problems, but for our team, which is Adobe at Adobe, which is an awesome team inside Adobe. All right, so we have uh, Adobe at Adobe folder there. And now I'm going to make a new node. All right, let's save it real quick. Like I said, rule of thumb, save, save, and save again. All right, so <clears throat> now that I have selected the apps AAA folder, I'm going to right click here. I'm going to hit create. And down here we have these wizards, um, create component. Now what you're doing when you're using this wizard is basically you're going to be creating a new node. And that node is going to have a sling resource type and a lot of properties on it that uh, match, match the definition of that. So this wizard is going to walk us through the process. So in the label, we're going to put in, um, let's see, new, what did I call it last time? Legal text. Title is legal text. Again, on the label, I, I recommend lowercase. Any node, anything that becomes a node needs to be lowercase. No special characters, no spaces, no any, nothing tricky. You're just going to cause yourself pain in the long run. Um, the description is a text component with whoops, a red header. All right. So now the label defines the node. Title is the title from the component that gets shown in the sidekick. Description, again, in the sidekick. Super type. So this is the super type or the inherited type. And in everything, everything in a JCR is a node. So we're going to put in the text component node. And for group, group is a nice way to um, just kind of group things in the sidekick. Um, in the sidekick, you'll see that the, the, there'll be components that are in groups like um, personalization, general, etc. Um, I put all of mine in the Adobe to Adobe group. 
uh, just to keep them really easy to find. So I'm going to hit next. Is a container, this checks box here, uh, defines whether or not this, this component is actually a component that contains other components. Um, ours is not, it's just a text component. Um, decoration, it, this checkbox here defines whether or not you um, care if there's divs that wrap your, your component when it's rendered. Um, when you, by default, when you drag a component on the page, um, the name, that did, there'll be a div that wraps it. Um, if for some reason you don't want that div wrapping your component, you need to check this box. I'm not going to go into cell name or dialog path at this point. We're going to go to next. Uh, now, allowed parents. Like I said, everything in, in JSON, in, everything is a node. So in here, I could specify that the parent is a, um, the allowed parents could be parsis. So only this component could actually be allowed. Your component, your new text component, could only be allowed to be dropped in this one particular type of component. Um, you can narrow it down to a list of many different types of components that your component could be a child of. Or you can just remove them all together and let your, uh, don't restrict where your component can go. So I'm just going to leave it wide open. It can go anywhere. I don't really have any restrictions about what parents my text box has to be in. Um, children, again, uh, what children com child components are allowed inside your component. We're not going to really care. All right, so now <clears throat> we'll see that on the left, what the, the wizard did is created a new node. And the type for the new node is CQ component. And by defining the primary type as a CQ component, we're going to pick up some behavior. And then these other properties, um, again, have value to that type. <clears throat> so the component group here, um, CQ component with the definition property. So you have a property defined as component group. This pulls it together in a sidekick. Uh, this is the description that gets played, displayed in the sidekick. Again, the title. And then uh, here's the sling resource super type. This defines where it inherits be its behavior from. Now, over here, you'll also notice that there's a legal text.jsp and a legal text node. So, by definition, the resolution on legal text node would be the legal text.jsp uh, page. So, this is the main code entry point. And as you can see, there's nothing in here. In fact, we'll just put in nothing. And then we'll save it. And then we're going to go back to our home page because we've created this. It's now a text component, it inherits from the base text component. And this is actually a, a, a legitimate component now. So let's hit refresh on the web page. Now we're going to go over to the sidekick. And we'll see under other. Uh, and why does it fall under other and not Adobe to Adobe? <clears throat> this is an interesting note. So until your component group has five or I think it's three or five components in it, it won't show up as an actual group in the sidekick. Um, also, I believe that there's a limitation based on how many groups are already being displayed in the sidekick. Uh, we can't show all the groups or we run out of space. So anyway, that's a nifty little gifty there for you. Um, so anyways, we got legal text here now. It's a regular component. But there's no definition. If you look at the main entry point, all there is is the word nothing. So literally, this text area does nothing. So let's go back and add some behavior to it. So we're going to go back in here. And what we want this thing to do is act just like the text component. So we're going to go in, and we're going to, oops, wrong directory. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go to libs foundation, foundation, components. I'm going to go down to text. I'm going to open up text.jsp here. Uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to grab it from here. Yeah, that'll work fine. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to bring it over to legal text, and I'm going to replace this, the uh, default contents of uh, legal text with this other, which actually, oops, I want to do that, which actually defines include the global.jsp and then output the property that equals text. And as you can see, when we go back to the max demo page, it actually <clears throat> show nothing because we haven't actually put any text in there. So let's put some text in there. Now, if you look, we have the edit control with the rich text editor, and that's because we inherited from the, the default behavior of the parent. The default behavior of the parent is to define styles and text as uh, input dialogs or edit dialogs. So let's put in uh, we put in some legal stuff. There we go. 
Okay, so now we have a, a default legal a text component that's displaying in the default manner there. Um, we want to go back in and add a red header to it. So I just go liberate some code from our original sample. And I'll just take a little bit of that, which is just basic HTML. It's just a div with some color on it, a border. No big deal. We'll change this to red. And then we'll hit Save All. OK, so this is the code in the JSP. Very basic. Exactly the same as the original JSP for the text.jsp, except for I added this div in here. Now let's go back to the site, refresh. And we'll see that it didn't work. So let's see, why didn't it work? Let's try another component and see. No, that's the wrong one. Oops. Did I not save it? I think I did not save it. OK. When, when good demos go bad, did I not hit save? Oh, no. I put it in the um, original. That's awesome. I put it in the foundation component. Oh, no, I didn't. It's right there. Wait. Oh, I did. Which one is this? I did. Oops. OK. My bad. Uh, a tip, when you're working on files all with the same name, probably just a good idea to close the other uh, uh, tabs that have the exact same name, because it uh, might get confusing. You might end up modifying the wrong file. All right. So let's go look at the page again. <coughs> and voila, we have the red border. Yay. Look at that. And you can go ahead, and if you were a <coughs> If you were an, uh, an author of this site, you should be able to go in here and uh, use this text component, this new legal text component, in different areas. So I'll add it to this parse this here. Because it's in a new component group, we need to, inherit, we need to uh, turn it on. OK. So now we're going to look in the sidekick. It should be listed under. <laughs> So there, there, here's what I was talking about. One, two, three, four. If there's less than, uh, it looks like if there's less than four columns, it will show up the extra group in there. Uh, so we'll drop this on the page. And now we have a legal text component that we can reuse across the site. All right, so that concludes being able to, uh, creating a component, inheriting from the a foundation based component. OK, so now I've just shown you how to create an inherited text component. This component was based off the original CQ Foundation component. Um, please stay tuned for part three, where I'll show you how to create a completely new component from scratch.